piece of white flesh turns past me, slaked with blood. Your evil eyes more damning than a demon's curse. Lovely body Soon caked with mud As I carry you To your grave My arms, your hearts You stand before me tragedy will be leaving Dover Air Force Base for transport to the state of California. Uh, approximately 300 bodies, one truckload, approximately 46 bodies will be going to the Los Angeles area to Fort MacArthur and the balance of the bodies will be going to the Oakland Army Base to be stored in the mortuary facility in Oakland. Let's just start with what's going to be happening tomorrow. Tomorrow, the uh, identified uh, bodies from the Guiana tragedy will be leaving Dover Air Force Base for transport to the state of California. Uh, approximately 300 bodies, one truckload, approximately 46 bodies will be going to the Los Angeles area to Fort MacArthur. And the balance of the bodies will be going to the Oakland Army Base to be stored in the mortuary facility in Oakland. Has this been much of a, uh, has this been a burden on the base? Are we glad to get rid of it, rid of the bodies? Well, we're glad to see the, uh, to see this come to an end. Uh, I think everyone here is glad to see these uh, bodies finally uh, be properly interred uh, in their rightful area in California. Uh, it hasn't really been a, a great burden on the base, uh, uh, although I'm sure it's been in everybody's mind uh, since Thanksgiving. I just, like I said before, all I was saying, there was no reason to hide it. I mean, like, uh, I, for one, have gained weight down here. Uh, I mean, regardless of what I'm eating, I mean, I didn't necessarily like it all the time, but I didn't like it, you know, when I was in the States all the time either. And uh, what does it matter? You know, it, it's, there's so many good things happening down, you know, with the killing. And uh, I knew that gun. 
I knew that the two shotguns we tried to get licensed for, we did get licensed for, we were trying to get licensed for others, and I never knew if these licenses came through. How many uh, guns were there? How many guns were there altogether? Uh, all that I knew of were, uh, at the mo I think, I think, I knew for sure of, I saw three, and I was, you know, I was reasonably sure that they were licensed, and uh, I, you know. You knew nothing of the catch of automatic weapons? No, I did not. Why was it necessary for your father to have approximately a million and a half dollars uh, in uh, cash and uh, gold and um, checks? It was, I don't see how it could be necessary at all, and I didn't know anything about it. And, it, and it's, it's made me more aggravated that, that, you know, there could have been a lot more for, you know, a lot of people with, you know, if that money would have been used. You know, uh, were you familiar with the term white knight? Yes, I was. It was. What have you done locally to ensure that those people who escape will not be in fear or harmed by the remnants of the people's temple? Have you done anything? Are there any extremist elements here? It seems to me that since this was a headquarters, that certain tribes and true men would be here, and that some of these people might well be in fearful of their lives still, even though they supposedly escaped, because some of them were pursued into the jungle. They were rifle fire yeah. in the jungle. I'm very, I, I, I understand what you're saying, and I'm worried that they will think that, and we haven't been able to do much of anything, we're kind of isolated, and uh, I'm trying, I, I can assure you that I really, I'm trying, I want, I want to get through to these people because I do want to help them because I feel a lot of guilt that I didn't, you know, uh, although I didn't really see any way that I could stop it without causing, you know, something, something to happen, I, I was trying, I didn't see it, you know, I Are you in radio come. contact with Johnston from Excuse Lamaha me? Gardens? Excuse me? Are you in radio contact with Johnston from Lamaha Gardens? No. How did you know what was happening? Do you know if Sharon received News. a late night call from, from Johnston? Uh, I know that she was taking traffic, and uh, uh, I was gone at the time, and I came back, and uh, it, she had done it. People ran to, out to me and told me what had happened. There were a lot of people in the house. Yes, but they, you know, I mean, are you... You can't expect people to think that somebody's going to take their, their, their be these children were beautiful. I can only describe them as beautiful. And uh, you can, no, no way, you know, we could imagine that she would take them up and, and do what she did. I mean, you know, I, I, they were there, but God, would you imagine it? I mean, could you, could you, uh... Is this Maria Caceres talking about? No, no, Sharon. my name is Sharon Amos. Oh, Sharon. Okay. With her, uh, children. Uh, Maria Caceres apparently killed, uh, John Vincent Stone and, uh, Kimo Probst. The two children who lived with your father. I don't. I don't know. I didn't know that. This is information that you're giving us. Giving us now. This is fact. We've not heard it. We, all we know about is what's come over the news here. Did John Timothy Stone live with your father <coughs> physically in the house? John. Uh, my mother did not live with my father. She lived. She lived separately. And uh, chemo and uh. John did live up there with him, and, uh, you know, we were led to believe, and we, I don't care if they were or not, I love them very much, but we were led to believe that they were, uh, you know, his sons, you know, on one, one side, and I, you know, there's no way, I, I was not a witness to the sexual act, so I, there's no way I could know, but all I can say is that uh, I love them very much, they were like little brothers to me, because I, you know, I never had a little brother, you know, my little brother is two years younger than me, and he's bigger than I am. And uh, I, I tried as best as I could to care for them and give them the fatherly attention that they never got. Uh, name, I think it was uh, Blakey gave a deposition in California in the Stone custody case. <coughs> and she testified at that time, was admitted to court here in Guyana, that Maria Cazares had one time given these two children sleeping pills because she didn't want to kill them when they were awake. It thought it'd be easier when she killed them if there were ever came a time she'd have to kill them, like apparently what took place out of it. Is uh, that beyond your realm of comprehension? Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't I, I mean I can only tell you that, you know, I mean these are like if you had two little sons to me and uh I would never have stood for that and they knew I wouldn't and anybody who's out there know that, that uh it was a conflict between me and and my my dad and anyone directly involved with him, you know, and it was a you know it was a very tight situation. I would never have stood for that if I would have known that would happen.
You indicated your mother was a fairly strong-willed woman who was completely and rationally aware of your father's condition, even to have something approaching paranoia, the drugs, and everything else. You even suggest that in that last moment of mother, 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 there might have been an argument going on at the last act of both their lives. And yet she apparently, and excuse me for, you know, I understand your grief what you've been through, but she apparently took sign. Like I said before, the only thing, only reason she told me many times, you know, because she had been hurt many times, you know, and, you know, we all have because of what we believed in and everything, but the only reason she lived is for, is for me and myself and my brothers, and uh, all I can think is that, you know, she thought that we, you know, we were gone. I can only say to that, to, 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 his, to his question there. Pardon? The radio wasn't working. I was talking about the radio. It was intermittently. It was intermittently. <laughs> and had it been, I would not have known because I wasn't there that often to, to know whether it was or not. But had, you know, because there might not have been, and if there had been intermittent communication, she might have assumed that all was lost here, you know, if there had been any communication, you know, that she and his dad were going to kill themselves. Um, How many people are left here? Forty some. Forty. How many are members of the basketball team? Uh, eleven are basketball players, and we have a trainer and a coach. Is it true that the basketball team was, in fact, the group that was trained to to be the marksmen for uh, the Temple? <laughs> no, no. It's not true. No, it's not. It's not true that the basketball team practiced with the W40 weapons and hundreds of thousands of rounds of ammunition were found. If we had practiced with these weapons and if we were the ones that, you know, de you know designated to do this, why would we be, be sent to town? Was it the conflict between you and your father who told you to be sent to the town? Yes. It could be. I, I don't know. I know that I came to, I wanted to play yeah, basketball. I wanted to. I wanted to prove that we could leave, and I wanted to—I felt we were good, and uh, I wanted to play. Steve, how many of your members are being detained at Lamar Hall Gardens, and how many in by the government and some other facilities? Uh, I think all of us that are here are being detained. You know, that have, we're in Jones, in Georgetown House when this happened, and it's about 46, I guess. I have a list. The, I have a list of the Georgetown House, right? Excuse me. Not all the Georgetown House. Yes. Every 46 people in the Georgetown House. That's right. No others, as far as you know, are being detained in police headquarters. I don't know anything that's going on. Isn't it true, Steve, that? Excuse me. Do you think the conflict with your father would have resulted in your death at any time? Do you think the conflict with your father would have resulted in your death at any time? No, I think he was scared of me. Do you think that is what pushed him? He felt you would have been ousted of the leadership, and that is what pushed him to his death radar. I can't say. I, I don't want to make you. Your father's illness, by any means, was not a terminal illness. He didn't think he was going to die. Did he talk about his death from because of these health reasons and drugs and everything? He talked about, you know, everything. You know, he's... I mean, specifically that. I mean, he talked about uh, everything. Did he think he was a dying man? I don't know if he... He said he did, but I don't he know did. if he really thought he was killing I don't know that. He had... He, num he listed a number of illnesses, you know, and I'm no doctor. Shaq treated him? Yes, but I, I would say that he treated himself, you know. What were some of the illnesses that he listed? Uh, there was no, I know he you know, claimed trouble with his heart. Uh, uh, I can't think of the uh, low blood sugar or high blood sugar. I don't know which it was. Uh, you know, what did your father think about that, that you had your position? Was that his, that you're nothing? Was he... Frightened of death? Was he? I mean, it's a normal human trait yeah, to right. you know, give those considerations. Uh, he, claimed he, was, he claimed he was afraid of nothing, which I know is bull. He's a very frightened man. Uh, he claimed uh, that, uh, I don't know, he had no ego, which is the total opposite. He had one of the biggest egos I've ever seen in my life. Uh, um, but I, I think he was, that's, that's another reason. I felt he was, it's, he did so much, you know, I felt he was, he feared for his life so much that he would never do anything like this. Steve, isn't it true that it was, that it was discussed among the top leadership that um, if this should come to pass, some people from Jonestown um, would, would then go to the, some who, who were decided who would live, would go to the states to 
uh, to kill the certain people who were on a list of enemies of the church? As I said before, uh, he never really let me in on the decision making because I was, I was, I guess what you might say, too contrary, you know. I believed in doing what we were doing at the time and uh, leave you all this. Have you heard any stories to this effect? Um, no. I, I mean, no. You've never Steve. heard that? Steve, you've heard. You're saying all the He never let you in on the decision making. You said that you had gradually at least came out of the decision making. Who was making the decisions here? Um, when I say the decision making, I mean in the total, uh, the working of the the, the 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 compound, right? You know, different, you know, facets of it. You know, like agriculture, you had construction, you had, uh, and you know, medical, you had everything, and everybody. There were, you know, there were departments, department heads, and then there was heads of that. You know, it was just like a little government. And uh, has the government of Guyana informed you or indicated to you uh, your status? Has anyone indicated their possible criminal charges pending? No, they haven't. Or deportations? No, they haven't. They've just asked you questions and you tried to speak. Steve, how close was your father to Mr. Reed? Mr. 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 Reed, Vice Premier of Guyana. I don't know. Uh, he complimented, complimented the man many times. Uh, and your father saw him from time to time in uh, Jonestown? Or, or Not in Jonestown. I don't even know that. I, I was rarely in Georgetown. Uh, did he meet him? Uh, he had met with him, but uh, and I was present at those meetings. And I can say at those meetings, he presented People's Temple as what People's Temple stood for: nonviolent, racially equal, economically equal, socially equal, and the community that it was basically built to be. And at that time that he presented himself, he presented the best parts of People's Temple, and not the insane aspect of his personality. Steve, under normal circumstances, it is almost impossible in Guyana for a foreigner to get land. I didn't know that it wasn't impossible. I didn't know that. There's, uh, there's not such a large, large lease. The lease was uh, 3,000 acres, I believe. Which, and considering the land mass here. No, no, it was not. It was not. It was not 28,000 because I was... Uh, directly involved with the lease. It was set on a basis of, um, like, a, I, I forget the word. Uh, you know, if, if we needed more land, it could be developed instead of having to drive 10 miles up a road. You know, you it, it, was, it was designed so that if the farm spread in such a way that it could be used, but it was not leased to us. Well, it was an option that it was the government determined whether we would have it. Were there ever religious ceremonies? There were uh, get-togethers, uh, you know, what I might say, joyous get-togethers, you know, everybody kind of uh, did their thing, you know. Like what, for instance? What would you do with Singing, uh, we had performances, you know, we have a good band, and, uh... But Steve, wasn't it true that most nights your father would, about 9 o'clock until 2 or 3 in the morning, whenever he finally got tired, would basically all the people had to come and sit in the pavilion and listen to him sort of talk and talk and talk and talk for And he, he required a lot of, uh, you know, teaching, not necessarily from him, but different classes, you know, we, uh, current events. You know, we had. Isn't it true that people 70 and 80 years old were, were forced to sit up half the night listening to this? At they, time. And if they fell asleep, your, the security guards would come over and poke them with a gun or with a. No, no, that's not that's not true. It's true that there were times that people were kept up to uh, you know unheard of hours. You know, and uh, it makes it sound like I condone it. I didn't, but uh, you have to put yourself in my spot. You know, what am I to do? Uh, I'm only 19 years of age. What am I to do? Do what? What? It, Debbie Blakey. I understand why she left. I understand her feelings. But what has she accomplished? Sorry. Nothing. You know. And I, I was only. I, I. I wanted to do the same thing she did. Stop it. But did she accomplish anything? Did any of the people that, that have left? You know. Understandably so. But have they accomplished anything? Could you explain why your father was so upset <laughs> the possibility of members leaving? No. I said before, he had a tremendous ego. And yeah, okay. said it felt that we were doing a good thing, you know. Uh, was there a tendency to violence among any of the members? 
this would lead you to believe that we may go out and do ill to the, 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 the temple. Uh, tendency to violence. Uh, I know myself committing murder or, you know, hurting anyone that had not, you know, hurt me. And uh, no, I, I think for the most part, like one thing that, that was remarkable to me was the, the relationship between young men my age, you know, in the, in the States it was like, uh, prove yourself, right? And uh, here we didn't have that, you know. But does anybody he, he tried, but he prevented from you. There was never any physical prevention, but I can say that there was an atmosphere there. I mean, it was like a... Uh, Steve, could you describe the extra care unit? I don't know what you're talking about. Isn't it true that anyone who tried to leave was caught and brought back and put on drugs for uh, a long period of time? If that is true, uh, I didn't know. I, I didn't know about it. I know a young man that I took care of and uh, cared a lot about Vincent Lopez, uh, at one time, he wasn't even leaving. I mean, he was a young kid, and I've done it before, wanted attention, you know. And, you know, he had no one, and I had said something to him, you know. I, I had gotten mad with him because he had a lot of bad patterns, you know, that he brought over. A lot of, you know, he stole a lot and stuff, and he, he left, you know, and he was brought back. And we were all put under the impression that, that he was sick, you know, he'd been bitten by something. And uh, he was, you know, taken to the, what, what we call intensive care, you know, people that had high temperatures and stuff like that. And if that happened, you know, I, I didn't know about it. Was the male sensitive? Excuse me? Was the male sensitive? I, I never got any mail. I don't have any, have that many relatives outside. But the mail, I, they used the mailing address in Georgetown. He was supposed to get it here and deliver it, okay? No, I, I. There are lots of people that say that the mail was sensitive, both in and out. I don't doubt that, but I, I, I can assure you, sir, I do not. I was not in on what happened here. I came here to play basketball, and I don't doubt that there was a lot of, you know, I, I'm doing the best I can, and I, and I understand your, I understand your problem. Stephen, did someone have the passports? Um, basically, had control of the passports. I, I don't know that. I know that one time, uh, Joyce Touche, uh, you know, recorded information, you know, necessary information of who was there their age, you know, and, and different things like that, so we could, you know. Under what conditions did they come? Who? Under what What do you mean? They flew, they came in. Uh, uh, not that I know of. You know, more and more, I can, all, all I can say is I wouldn't doubt it, but I can tell you. Uh, you never heard about a tape recording of a... I, I have never heard that, but I can tell you there was like, uh, you know, he read a lot of books, a lot of books, and I think he tried to live through his books, and he played a lot of games, but I just felt like, you know, I didn't play his little games, and, you know, just stay away, and I'm going to do what I can here, and build what I can here, and uh, if he did it, I don't doubt it, you know, there's a lot of game playing, there's a lot of uh, unnecessary, you know, stuff done, but, uh, what he has taught me is now in my mind, in my body. It's not any kind of thing that I read and I follow. You know, it's just what I feel. You know, I know when I what I feel is wrong and what I feel is right. And I think he knew basically, you know, what was wrong and right. I just think that he became obsessed, you know, with his ego, with his power. There were a lot of women that were just uh, that worshipped him, you know, and uh, I think he just he thought he was. Something. Yeah, uh, she felt very hurt. She was, see, this is what originally, you know, many years ago, separated me and my father because I love my mother very much. She's a very love. She was a very loving and understanding person, and I think anybody that's encountered her can testify to that. And uh, uh, I think she just she knew she had something to do. She was head of you know the medical department, and she was you know everybody loved her, and she was just trying to get something done. And she knew that if she were to dwell on what he did, you know, there was no way, you know, I too, there was no way that we could get done what we wanted, you know, to, to, to accomplish. And uh, I, I think it hurt her, but I think, you know, she got over it. Well, Jill Rhodes, Jill Rhodes said that uh, uh, at the uh, suicide, when Shaq made the portion, uh, that 
these were nurses passed out the portion. Were there many nurses up there? Or was your mother the nurse? Um, there were many, but I, mom was a nurse, but like she was a, like I said, there was a government-like thing, and she was the one that was in charge of the medical department, you know. She saw that everyone, like, you know, just an example, let's say someone, uh, one of our seniors was not well, uh, he had a wife, but he, he had to be moved to an intensive care area, and she would make sure, you know, that like, the wife got to move in with him, you know. She, she was just, she made sure everything was going smoothly, and everybody reported to her. Uh, I, I, I have I have a mother and father. I have two brothers in town, two adopted brothers. I'm the only natural born. Uh, Are they both younger than you? One's older, one's younger. Uh, but I mean, it's only the one that's older. It's only a matter of months, and uh, Steve, one that's younger. Did you know about the black box? What black box? I mean, black box that Debbie Lathan spoke about, where people were put in it from one to seven days. That, that's not true. I was going to go across the